Welcome back to another episode of Nathan Reads. Today I want to share with you another portion from the book Holiness by J.C. Ryle. And in this portion, he's talking about Lot's wife. And particularly, he's talking about the religious privileges which Lot's wife enjoyed. So I'm going to jump in here and read a portion of this and share some thoughts. In the days of Abraham and Lot, true saving religion was scarce upon earth. There were no Bibles, no ministers, no churches, no tracts, no missionaries. The knowledge of God was confined to a few favored families. The greater part of the inhabitants of the world were living in darkness, ignorance, superstition, and sin. Not one in a hundred, perhaps, had such good example, such spiritual society, such clear knowledge, such plain warnings as Lot's wife. Compared with millions of her fellow creatures in her time, Lot's wife was a favored woman. She had a godly man for her husband. She had Abraham, the father of the faithful, for her uncle by marriage. The faith, the knowledge, and the prayers of these two righteous men could have been no secret to her. It is impossible that she could have dwelt in tents with them for any length of time without knowing whose they were and whom they served. Religion with them was no mere formal business. It was the ruling principle of their lives and the mainspring of all their actions. All this Lot's wife must have seen and known. This was no small privilege. When Abraham first received the promises, it is probable life's wa- um, Lot, sorry, Lot's wife was there. When he built his altar by his tent between High and Bethel, it is probable she was there. When her husband was taken captive by uh, Kedorlamir and delivered by God's interference, she was there. When Melchizedek, king of Salem, came forth to meet Abraham with bread and wine, she was there. When the angels came to Sodom and warned her husband to flee, she saw them. When they took them by the hand and led them out of the city, she was one of those whom they helped to escape. Once more, I say, these were no small privileges. Yet what good effect had all these privileges on the heart on the heart of Lot's wife? None at all. Notwithstanding all her opportunities and means of grace, notwithstanding all her special warnings and messages from heaven, she lived and died graceless, godless, impenitent, and unbelieving. The eyes of her understanding were never opened. Her conscience was never really aroused and quickened. Her will was never really brought into a state of obedience to God. Her affections were never really set upon things above. The form of religion which she had was kept up for fashion's sake and not from feeling. It was, sorry about that, I hit the mic. It was cloak worn for the sake of pleasing her company but not from any sense of its value. She did as others did around her in Lot's house. She conformed to her husband's ways. She made no opposition to his religion. She allowed herself to be passively towed along in his wake, but all this time her heart was wrong in the sight of God. The world was in her heart, and her heart was in the world. In this state she lived, and in this state she died. In all this there is so there is much to be learned. I see a lesson here which is of the deepest importance in the present day. You live in times when there are many persons just like Lot's wife. Come and hear the lesson which her case is meant to teach. So I want to stop there. Sort of a cliffhanger, I know. Um, But it's just amazing to me because I never really think much about Lot's wife, right? She turned into a pillar of salt but you don't think about all the privileges she had. And when I was reading this portion, I tried to reverse uh, her reality to see if we could try to aim for something better. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So the portion where I read that says, the eyes of her understanding were never opened. Well, let's pray that our eyes of understanding will be opened. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some water. I hope you're all doing well, whether it's morning time, uh, evening, afternoon. I pray that you're blessed. Um, another portion in this was, her will was never really brought into a state of obedience to God. And I want you to ask yourself, is your will, has it been brought into a state of obedience to God? Her affections were never really set upon things above. Can you honestly say that your affections are set upon things above? The form of religion which she had she had was kept up for fashion's sake and not from feeling. Let me ask you, Christian, is your form of religion only kept up for fashion's sake? And is there not any feeling that comes along with it? I'll stop there for tonight. It is, it's been a beautiful week. Uh, me and my wife are going on our first year wedding anniversary tomorrow. And it's our first time leaving William, our uh, like two and a half month year old son with our grandparents. We're super excited about that. And I know they're excited and we're just praying for a, a blessed time for all of them and for us as we enjoy our time together. Uh, the Lord is good, and I pray that all of you would look to Him and to strive to be holy. Although we are not saved by our acts of holiness, it is pleasing to the Lord. If you have any questions or suggestions, or you just want to chat, um, feel free to shoot me a message at my email, nathanreadspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, apart from that, I look forward to uh, jumping back next week and uh, reading something else for you guys. I hope you have a blessed one.